I'm Manu and Tereme. I played Icheb on Star Trek Voyager. I also played a character named Billy on One Tree Hill that the, I sometimes get recognized for by the girls. I was such a nasty guy on that show. He was a bad, bad man, Billy. Yeah, yeah, Icheb was such a good boy. And I, you know, lately um, I tend to get cast more as villains and, and more as ruffians or... All my characters since Icheb, and even, if, even Icheb had a bit of a chip on his shoulder. So most of my stuff is, uh, whether it's a hero or whether it's a villain, it's somebody that's carrying some sort of an edge, some sort of a demon that they're fighting, some sort of a chip on their shoulder. Stuff that I do best. I mean, each have had a little bit of an, you know. And then his own parents sent him back to the Borg, so he must have had some anger going on in him. And you, you, know, you could see in his eyes that he wasn't a happy kid, but a good kid. I like it. I, you know, I don't think that it, people ask, do you, do, you like to, do you like to play villains or do you like to play heroes? And f for me, it, it doesn't matter. It's all about what's written best because it's great fun to play heroes. If you've got, and it's great fun to play villains. If you got to play a role like Joker and it was written like, you know, Heath Ledger's Joker, love to play a role like that mm -hmm. but then if it was uh if you think of like bruce willis john McLean, yeah fantastic fantastic hero um the but then the the villain that i'm thinking of that is cliche and it's not the actor's fault but the writing was uh daredevil you see daredevil the movie mm -hmm. uh colin farrell who's a great actor mm -hmm. but that villain had nothing to say and he was so cliche and so it's to me it's all about the writing it's all about if, if it's written well, that's the part I want to play. Well, it dawned on me that it, at some point, maybe when I was probably 29, 30 years old, that every A-list actor in town had a production company and was producing their own work. There's almost none of them that aren't producing their own films at least getting producing credit of some kind, whether they're really hardcore in their producing or not, they're, uh, you know, they have a company. Um, and it, I just decided if I was going to have any sort of control over the art that I made, I was going to have to work 10 times as hard as I was working, um, just being a, a lucky pretty white boy from Southern California that, you know, got lucky in life uh, to, actually, you know, caring about and taking a, a responsibility for the art that I was making. And so in the future, I, I want to be able to, I, I want to say before I die that I've been, a, that I've made the film that I was meant to make, that I can look at front to back, first frame to last, and know that I did everything right. That's very difficult, yeah, and it's it's a, a far from being done, you know, but like, I'm sure I always think Tarantino, Pulp Fiction, right? I think when he made that film, I think he had that feeling. I've done it. I don't think it made him want to stop working, hmm. but I think he went, I did it, you know, and I've, I've seen a, a, a friend of mine's film called Honey Glue came out this year, my friend James Bird, and it's such a beautiful film from uh, beginning to end. And I was jealous of him because I was like, you know, that must be a great feeling to just know that you made, not only in, uh, affected people and made, and made them cry, made them feel and grabbed their heartstrings, but did it perfectly, <laughs> you know? Personally, it's, for me, it's all about story. I want, I want to tell good stories. Well, there's so much about filmmaking that has to go right for the story to be told right. You know, any department in film can kill, kill your movie. If any key department doesn't do their job, your movie's dead. Um, but I, was, I want to be, you know, I want to tell stories. The reason I acted to begin with was to get a chance to be a part of something so good that it spread empathy. When I see an amazing movie, and I walk out of the theater, and I, know, I knew nothing about the type of life that those characters were living before I walked into that theater. Uh, I couldn't relate to them at all. But I walked out knowing what it was to live in those, those people's shoes, and then I, I find that really powerful movies 
make human beings more empathetic to one another because we're more connected to, oh, I didn't know it was that difficult for a poor man, a poor boxer from Boston. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I want to make, I think we have a lack of empathy in our species. I don't think, and I think filmmaking is one of the ways that we can connect to each other and spread that. Yeah, I don't think movies can change change the world, you know. I think that's going a bit too cliche with it, but I think that you can definitely affect change and affect um, just empathy. The word that I always think of is empathy, care. I think there's a, a, a lot of powers out there in society that are trying to kill care and trying to, you know, the capitalism approach is rugged individuality, competition, and I'm more about like, let's help each other make some magic and make some beautiful things. So it's, it's the most difficult part of getting films financed when they're about something. Dramas are the hardest films to get made because they're not full of explosions and aliens and boobs. Act action and boobs and yeah. Uh, I can still have boobs in my movies. I'm not against boobs. Uh, I like boobs too. Most people do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, I, I want I want to tell stories that mean something. Sure, sure. I mean, I I I have. Um, there's this there's this weird. But I mean, would I make a film personally if I was in charge? As, yes. As, as a producer, or director, no. I I, um, I don't think I would make anything for the sake of. It. No, I wouldn't. Um, violence for the sake of violence or I don't see there's nothing a attractive about that the best sort of film the best sort of film is I don't care if it rocks you emotionally if it grabs your heart if it makes you feel sad if it makes you feel positive about mankind if it makes you feel sad about history about what we could do better if it scares the living crap out of you, if it makes you laugh hysterically, if it gives you two hours of pure joy and laughter. There's so many gamuts of the human emotions that film can make you experience. And as long as it accomplishes one of those, I'm happy with the product. So you can't, I can't really answer it with one. There's the, you know, dramas are the greatest films or comedies are the greatest films. I've seen great romantic comedies. I've seen fantastic dramas. I've seen incredible film noirs and, and everything in between, musicals. I don't have a favorite movie. Just any film that rocks you on any level.